Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorian. Now, you've seen the cook racks before. We looked at it as a tool last time. Now let's have a little talk about whether it's a good weapon. So the cook racks, is it a gimmick or is it awesome and revolutionary? Well, I think it's actually neither of those things exactly. It's just a different kind of tomahawk. It's got a slightly different shape to it. Some people on my previous video um, violently reacted to the shape of this thing. Uh, some people violently reacted to the fact that they thought that I was selling the thing. I don't make this. I'm not part of the development. I'm not part of the selling. I don't get anything out of this. This isn't a sponsored video at all. Okay, this is a pure review. Um, now, as you saw in the previous video, hopefully, um, I was actually very surprised by how well it chopped as a tool, considering its size. Does it chop as well as a large uh, two-handed felling axe um, when we're chopping down trees? No. Full disclosure, I've actually chopped down three trees in the last week. Um, not particularly big trees. Um, probably about that diameter. So, uh, you know, relatively small, but they were probably about 30, 40 feet tall. And um, I took down two of them with this just for the fun of it. Um, on the third one, I switched to a more traditional two-handed axe because I was getting a lot of blisters on my hand um, and uh, I was running out of energy on the third one. But I did take down two trees with this. Um, and not only did I take down those two trees, but I also chopped the tree trunks up into bits to dispose of them, well actually to use them, um, and then I um, chopped all of the smaller branches off to dispose of those. For anybody who's upset about the fact that I'm chopping down trees, this is just part of forest. I live on the edge of a forest and sometimes I, we have to clear some bushes and trees. Um, they have to be managed to some degree, so these had to be taken down. It, as a wood chopping axe, for its size, and I compared it previously to the um, Condor Tomahawk, which is admittedly a bit longer, although you'd normally hold it about there. So it's a roughly comparative um, size. As a wood chopping instrument, as a tool, it's pretty good and it was much better than I expected it to be. The, um, a few people made an interesting observation about the tilt of this handle, that particularly when you're chopping something that is below your shoulder height, it means that this tilt, it means you can put more of your upper arm and shoulder and perhaps body mass behind the chop rather than necessarily kind of using more of the forearm. I, I don't know exactly how and why this works the way it does, um, but it does work surprisingly well for chopping wood. Now, as a weapon, well, a weapon is a very, very different thing to a tool. Although before I go on, I just want to remind you that lots of weapons get used as tools, especially in the modern world. So if someone is armed with a, uh, well, even if they're armed with a cookery, okay? So if they're armed with a cookery in the jungles of Burma, like my own great uncle was throughout the Second World War, first he was in India, and then I think he was fleetingly in Singapore at one point, and he ended up in the jungles of Burma fighting the Japanese in World War II. He had a cookery, and that cookery is still in the family. Um, not saying that he ever fought anyone with it, but he carried that cookery throughout the war. And despite the fact that a cookery is a weapon, what did my great uncle uh, and everybody else, uh, well, most of the people who've carried a cookery through their service lives, used it for? A tool. Yes, it's a sidearm, but it's also a tool and it gets used for all sorts of things from uh, chopping up a fish to uh, perhaps clearing some uh, brush to all sorts of stuff, okay? And yes, indeed, it is primarily, however, kind of a weapon. This isn't really optimized to be a tool. This is optimized to be a fighting weapon. Now, the cook racks is a bit problematic from that point of view because it is marketed um, as a fighting ax. But this crooked shape, does that make it better or worse as a fighting axe? Well, we've seen that somehow it does seem to, for its size, make it punch above its weight as a chopping implement. So number one, as a fighting weapon, if the cook cracks, if the cook cracks chops more effectively than the traditional tomahawk, then that is a plus in its favour. That means it is more potent. It packs more punch. I would also say some people said I should chop down a tree with a cookery. I'm not going to do that with my hundred year old cookery. Uh, I might do it with a modern cookery. In fact, I'd happily do it with modern cookery. However, I know from chopping things with cookeries because I've done all sorts of test cutting with them and I have used them as tools that this will not absolutely will not chop wood as effectively as an axe will. Surprise, surprise, 
axes are better for chopping wood than knives are. This is therefore a more potent chopper. But is it a more potent weapon overall? Well, a weapon is something that's got to be versatile, it's got to be quick, it's got to be something that you could maybe use defensively in some situations, unless you're using a shield or you're using your other arm to somehow defend, um, or just evasion. Um, these two things compared to each other, I would very much argue that the kukri is a superior weapon, despite the fact that the kukrax is a powerful chopper. Let's just break that down into why I believe that. Well, number one, the kukri is more nimble. Okay. Uh, number two, it is edged all the way up, okay, which makes it more difficult to oppose, um, block and grapple, disarm, this kind of thing. Number three, it has a point. Okay. Now, there are other points I could, there are other points, there are other um, factors I could bring in uh, to compare these two, but I'm just going to focus on those three things. Is it more nimble? Yes. Is it just because this one is a bit heavier than this? Uh, partly, but it's also because the mass on the cook racks is at the end of the weapon, which is of course why it chops more effectively. It's why it chops wood more effectively than the cookery would. So the, the um, cookery, despite the fact by knife standards, by, by normal bladed weapon standards, the cookery is seen as a hard hitting cutter because it has mass towards the tip. Compared to an axe, it's not got as much, okay? So actually an axe is a harder hitter um, than the kukri is, but therefore the kukri is more nimble, is quicker, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing, I don't think anybody can argue about, the kukri is edged from tip to almost the base of the blade down to the cho, okay? So being edged all the way down has two advantages. I've spoken about in previous videos. The first one, very important, means target uh, or cut placement. If I'm hitting an opponent, I'm moving, they're moving, we're moving in and out, we're weaving in and out. I might hit their arm when I aim for their head because they threw their arm up like this. If I hit them anywhere from here to here, I'm going to hopefully wound them or I stand a good chance of wounding them because I've got an edge all the way down here. With the axe, and this is always a problem with axes, I can only wound them effectively with that portion of blade, which is about six inches. Okay, so I, I've only got about six inches to play with <laughs> um, in this case. And if I get it slightly wrong, I'm either going to hit them with air, which is the same with any blade, or I'm just going to hit them with the shaft. Now, admittedly, in the case of this particular one, the shaft isn't very long, but it is a bar of steel. So it might hurt them, but it's probably not going to wound them. So for example, if, you, if you're uh, fighting someone and you swing your weapon at their head and they put their arm up like this, there is a good chance that this will come over. It might reach over because of the angle, and I'll talk about that in a minute, of the shaft. But if they block here, they can, although it might break their arm and it might hurt their arm, it will at least not uh, probably wound their arm severely in most cases, especially if they're wearing any kind of jacket or coat. Whereas if that happens with the cookery, they stand a much larger chance of being wounded. So long edges make it easier to wound an opponent. And the final thing is the point. And I mean, yes, that's true. I mentioned this before. You can thrust with that theoretically. And certainly if you uh, jabbed that into someone's um, face or throat, it's going to be quite nasty. OK, yes, nasty compared to, you know, a punch or whatever. However, much nastier is the point of a cookery. Uh, the point of a, a sword like object is much, much more potent than this uh, quite broad angle here. Right. The next aspect is reach and angle of the shaft. So uh, as a weapon, the cook racks is quite small. And that's why so far I've been comparing it to the cookery because they're in a similar ballpark. Though I have to say, this is even slightly shorter than the cookery. So for its size, for its size category, we have to say that this is a very potent hitter. It hits with a lot of power for its size. And well, you might say, well, why not carry a bigger weapon? Yes, that's true. But a smaller weapon, whether it's a knife or a, you know, a small dagger, is always useful because it can be concealed. It can be worn easily. It can be carried in a backpack. It can be carried around all day. Like a It's like saying, well, why carry a pistol if you can have a rifle? Well, because you can wear a pistol easily and carry it all day and not even practically notice it's there. So there is an advantage to a smaller weapon that still is able to uh, be effectively used as a weapon, but is small. Clearly, we're not going to compare the cook racks with 
the uh, Montante behind me or one of the longer swords. It's not a fair comparison. Is this a better weapon than one of those? No, of course not. Never, ever, ever. Unless you're in such a confined space that this is the biggest thing you can use. Um, but no, it, it, in, an, in an open space, no, you can't compare this with larger weapons. We can only, at most, compare it with things like the conventional tomahawk or perhaps as far as swords and knives are concerned, at most something like a short sword, like this Bronze Age uh, leaf blade sword here, the Ewart Park. Um, now, is this as good a weapon as those? Well, um, potentially this maybe hits a bit harder. For its size, it's relatively heavy, and it's got that angulation which does seem to make it more of a chopper, more of a heavy chopper. Just the same, and lots of people go, oh, but well, axes don't normally have bench up. You've never complained about the fact that Kukri's are this shape. You've never complained about the Falcata or the Copis or the Falks or the Kopesh or all of the other weapons from history, the Shotel, all of the other weapons from history that do have a forward leaning angle. The bill hook, if we're talking about tools, the bill hook. You've never complained about bill hooks, so why are you complaining about this? The fact is, this combines that forward tilt that we find on lots of other weapons and some other tools with an axe. I don't have any ethical problems against that at all. It seems to work. It seems to combine some of the properties of a bill with an axe. That's fine. Um, however, when we're talking about weapons, um, reach obviously comes into it as well. And there are some sacrifices to having this forward tilt. One of them is that, um, <laughs> that essentially we're losing some reach. If this shaft was straightened out for the same amount of material, the axe head would be more up here, okay, which will give us a couple of inches of extra reach. Uh, in terms of defending, so I mentioned uh, against an opponent, if they have a shield, um, so just grab a shield here, if they have some kind of blocking uh, shield device, then having a tilt or a, 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 a projecting blade on the end of the weapon, whether it's a Dacian Falx or whether it's a, a Battle Axe or a, something like this, does mean that you can come past the defense, whether they're just throwing their arm up or whether they're throwing a shield up or whatever, cloak, whatever they have. This can reach over, and not, over can it, not only can it reach over, it can hook, and that can be applied to people's limbs, as well as it can be applied to shields or anything else. So the hook potentially has some benefits in specific situations, but generally speaking, it does reduce the reach for the amount of material that you've been used. That's also true of curved swords. The more curved the sword is, the closer you have to be to the opponent to hit them with the effective part of the blade. But when comparing the Kukrax directly with a tomahawk of similar sort of proportions and material um, and mass and this kind of stuff, one of the big disadvantages of the Kukrax compared to a tomahawk is that tomahawk can reach further. Now, one on one in a fight, which one would I choose out of these two, a tomahawk and a Kukrax? Well, personally, I'd choose the tomahawk, okay? Um, because of the extra reach. The crooked angle, whilst it potentially adds more to the power of the blow, and certainly this chopped wood more effectively than this one did, um, the fact of having reach, I don't need to chop through a whole tree if I'm hitting an opponent. If I'm using a fighting weapon, I'd rather have extra reach. So rather having extra reach, I'd rather go for the tomahawk. But do you know what? Rather than the tomahawk, I would rather go for the Bronze Age leaf bladed sword, because that's got all of the advantage I mentioned about bladed weapons. It's more nimble, okay? The balance point's near the hand. It's got a point I can thrust with. It's got two edges, and it's got edges from the point all the way down to the hilt, which means that it's easier for me to wound, whether I hit someone up here or here or here or here, I'm gonna probably wound them. And if they defend, or they try to grab my weapon, and that's another point here um, that I have spoken about in the past, if you're um, fighting against someone with this kind of weapon and they're swinging it at you, you can, in a worst case scenario, just block against a shaft, or you can try and grab the shaft and you can try and disarm them of it. Much more difficult to do with a weapon that has an edge all the way up, okay? Um, so, I would go, out, out of these two, I would go for the tomahawk, because it's got greater reach. Um, out of uh, the, this and the uh, leaf bladed sword, I'd take the leaf bladed sword most of the time, with some caveats, maybe if we were fighting with shields, maybe if we were fighting in armor, maybe then I'd go back to the axe, as I've spoken about in previous videos. 
But going full circle between the cookery and the cook racks as a fighting weapon, I would personally go for the cookery, but it's not as wide a gap as you might think. I would go for the cookery because personally, knowing more or less what I'm doing with knives and, and daggers, because that's one of my hobbies, that's what I do, um, I would rather have a full edge and I'd rather have the ability to thrust and I'd rather have a weapon that's a bit more nimble and quick. Okay, But that being said, for lots of people who are less trained with bladed weapons, having a weapon that has a bit more end mass to it but is still the same size as a knife, as a large knife, bowie knife or cookery like this, there might be some advantages to this. And to bring the review full circle as a tool, as a tool only, I would argue Whilst this might be a slightly better fighting weapon, I believe this is a slightly better tool. And I believe that for a lot of uh, jobs, certainly in a, you know, a forest or jungle or whatever, the cook racks, so long as you've got something like a machete on hand as well for clearing brush, you know, you need different tools for different jobs. I think that the cook racks in some environments and in some situations might be a better tool than the cookery is. I think the cookery is a better weapon and I think the cook racks is a better tool. And as a weapon, whilst I prefer the cookery personally, I do think that this is not a bad weapon for its size. Yes, longer weapons are better, but if you want to have something that is uh, of the size of a, a large knife or a cookery, large bowie knife, then the cook racks has some things going for it. And I do think in some scenarios it's a better tool than they are, and it's still a reasonably good weapon. Anyway, I hope that's going to be uh, interesting for you. Uh, post your views below. Remember, this is not sponsored at all. I'm not telling you to buy the cook racks, but it is a very interesting thing. Um, and I can't really say a lot of, I can't say anything really bad about it. It's chopped down two trees. Um, it's it's th taken everything I've thrown at it. Just very briefly on the subject of throwing, I do not believe this would make a good throwing axe because throwing axes tend to go into the wood at that angle. So in actual fact, a um, straighter axe will go in like that, and this one, the head won't be pointing in the right direction. So I don't think it will make a good throwing axe, but I'm not an axe throwing expert. Um, so I think, it's, uh, I think it's taken everything I can throw at it. It is um, quite formidable at chopping for its size. Um, it's not a bad weapon. I would personally prefer a cookery, but I think that this has some virtues as well. Um, and, uh, and finally, comparing like for like in terms of size and carryability, convenience, this has some advantages over comparable knives of the same size for really not much more weight and no more, more, no more size. Thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, lots more videos like this and on random other weapon related um, topics. Give us a like, um, check out Patreon for extra videos if that's uh, something you're interested in and uh, links below to all of my other uh, websites and stuff and I will see you really soon for another video on Scholar Gladiator channel. Cheers folks! Thanks for watching, we've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks!